Hi, my name is Stephen McGee, and I'm the author of Curing Electromagnetic Hypersensitivity. I'm here to review this experiment. In fact, it's a number of experiments. And what we're actually looking at is the winner of each category of experiment that I ran on the Diefenbachia. And all of these Diefenbachias were grown in very high-powered, biologically toxic radio wave fields. And they actually look pretty good, and that's because I intervened with the growth, and we're gonna go through the various methods that I used to get the Diefenbachia to grow inside a biologically toxic radio frequency contaminated home. But before we do, I'm gonna show you what the control plants look like. So this is a control plant that was grown in my home. It used to look like these. And the Diefenbachia has very large leaves, typically the size of your hand, with lots of patterning. And I typically use either this variety or this variety. So this used to look like those plants, as you can see, very clearly is highly deformed. It has glossy radio frequency exposure leaves. And this glossy leaf effect and the loss of patterning is very classic radio frequency exposure in plants. So this one actually grew in my living room. So this is one of the first plants that I grew in the home in 2011, when I became aware that the plants were actually deforming in the home. And this was very typical of all the deformity I was seeing throughout the home. And that has now cleared up. So in 2014, two events happened at my property. I cut down my very tall tree on the property because I found that it was emitting electromagnetic fields. And I also complained about a cell phone tower. So the west cell phone tower from my property had a transmitter on it, which was removed sometime in 2014. And all the plants that I brought into the home in 2014 are actually growing just fine. So it seems the combination of those two events has returned my home back to a home where you can grow Diefenbachias. So the reason why I'm showing you this plant experiment is because I'm no longer gonna be able to do these experiments. And these were the winners of the various experiments that I performed while I had that biologically toxic radio frequency field throughout the home. And we're gonna start with this one down here. So this one was the winner of the grounded pot. So if you look down here, we've got foil strips going into the base of the pot that grounds the roots and the soil. And it was grown in my master bathroom. And it was by far the best grounded plant that I ever grew. And it was very repeatable in the master bathroom. So it's a very nice looking plant. So that was the winner of the grounded floor. This one is the winner of the battery. So I actually found that if you connect these plants to standard one and a half volt batteries that they grow very well. So this has two batteries, so it's a three volt battery. It's connected to the pot through a 470 ohm resistor, or K ohm resistor, I should say, it's 470,000 ohm resistor. And this is what it produced. So it's a very beautiful looking plant. It's also a very tall plant. So when you connect these plants up to a voltage, they grow very, very well when they're in a biologically toxic radio wave field. And that appears to be because radio waves seem to collapse the natural DC voltage that is in the atmosphere and the plant seems to need that voltage to thrive. And without that voltage, the plant gets very, very sick. So that's the winner of our DC voltage experiment. So this one is the winner of the supplements experiment. So this one got kelp. And there's something about kelp when you're in a radiation field that is particularly beneficial. And it seems to offset a lot of the radiation effects. And you end up with a very beautiful plant. So this plant got the adult dose of kelp 
once a month in its water and it's grown beautifully. So the next plant is this plant and this one got tea. I was very, very surprised at tea. I never expected it to have this effect on the plant, but it produced a very tall plant with very nice leaves. And I now drink tea as a result of that. And that's coincided with me no longer having the hypersensitivity condition also. But the, the winner, the outright winner in all of these experiments is this plant. So this plant actually has a battery powered watch in its roots. And by putting that battery powered watch in the roots, it appears to put pulses through the roots of the plant that are very beneficial to it. And that watch looks just like this one. So it's a very similar model of watch inside here. And I was very surprised that the watch would have such a beneficial effect. And that's why I now wear the watch myself, because it was good for the plant. So it appears that it's also good for me. So those are plants, the various experiments that I ran in the high powered radio wave fields of my home. And this is what they produced. So you can see that we got some very good looking Typhon Bacchias, and we didn't get the retards like this one. And I had no shortage of retarded Typhon Bacchias throughout my home before I started figuring out that you could do this to the Typhon Bacchia in a radio wave field and get this growth. If you want to find out more about these techniques and how they relate to human health, you'll find it in curing electromagnetic hypersensitivity. I hope you enjoyed the video and I wish you the very best of health. Thank you.